Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Patrick Dotty, and I am me. I know that doesn't surprise you. It does me. I wrote this book titled I Am Me. In it, I tell stories of more than half of my life. I tell story of a boy who was raped when he was nine years old. I tell the story of a boy who was bullied by his older brother for years. I tell the story of a boy who was, discovers he's gay, and because he's part of a typical Irish-Italian family, living on the northwest side of Chicago, he hides who he really is and lives his life to please others, to please his parents, his brothers, and his sisters, his friends, his two wives, everyone but himself. He just lives to be who they want him to be. Then, finally, finally, well, finally, he becomes me. And that's another story in the book. I wrote this book to become a voice of all victims of abuse. Each person who has ever suffered sexual abuse, bullying, or the need to hide who they really are. I wrote this book so each of those persons can become himself or herself and live his life or her life so each of them can, can say, I am me. Excuse me for just a minute. Give me the book. Do you hear that sound? That's the sound of a bathroom door being locked. When I first heard that sound, I was nine years old. I was in a public bathroom in a department store on a snowing winter night doing my business. I had been out playing with my friends and my older brother who was watching under my mother's orders. We got cold and wet. So we came into the department store to warm up. We decided to play hide and seek. As usual, I was picked to be the seeker. The moment that everyone ran and hid, I suddenly had to go to the bathroom. I couldn't find my brother. So, against my mom's constant warnings, I went into the bathroom alone. As I was doing my business, I suddenly sensed I wasn't alone. I was terrified. I was afraid. Then, I saw an eye looking at me through a hole in the toilet wall. When he saw me see him, that's when he got up and he went to the door and locked it. I live with that sound every day of my life. Even now, I hear it, and it terrifies me. I won't go into the actual rape now. You can read it in the book. You can also find out how a few years later, I discovered my rapist was serial killer John Wayne Gacy. Then I finally understood why he tried to get me that day out of that bathroom and go through the store and get into his car. After the rape, I ran home. I was terrified. And I hid in my closet in the bedroom door, in the bedroom that I shared with my older brother, my bully. 
when he came home, he was furious. I, because I had left without him. So when he heard me crying in the closet, he opened the door and he beat me. That's what my bully did. He did what he had did, what he always had did when I was growing up. He beat me. A few years later, he beat me so bad, my parents had to take me to the, to the hospital emergency room. When the doctor asked my father what had happened, my dad said what he had always said. Boys will be boys. So, my bully felt free to be, to be my bully. Mind you, I didn't tell anyone about the rape. I didn't tell. And so I lived with it. I lived with the sound of a bathroom door being locked every day of my life. That sound you heard, I live with it. And those memories never go away. Till this day, that sound. I married twice. I have a beautiful 18-year-old daughter. I lived more than 30 years of my life not telling. Then, my bully forced me to come out. And that's how my recent journey, my journey of the last few years, let me here tonight with all of you. But that's another story you can read in the book. Right at the beginning, man, as a fact, it's a very good place to start. Okay, the drama is over. Um, and after that, I would like to read a little bit of my book to all of you. Um, a chapter that's really um, important to me uh, for the fact that it was a chapter in my life where I came out to my mother as an adult, which most people in this audience might be able to understand. Um, but. I'd like to have a few questions and answer some, answer whatever anyone has um, about the book or um, recently, um, as of yesterday, Thursday, we were on Good Day Chicago and they did a wonderful interview um, about my book and about my story. And Chicago Sun-Times will be, it's being covered in the digital version now and it will be um, in Sunday's newspaper, so you can all read it as well. But um, can I take any questions, or does anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Yes. Vaguely, but um, it doesn't surprise me. Part of um, when I came forward with my story and really became public um, through uh, social media, I 
was just speaking out and speaking out about the abuse from my brother, the, the abuse, the rape by Gacy, um, and, you know, telling the story through social media. Um, many men, um, I shouldn't say many, three or four or five men uh, contacted me through Facebook and said, I was a victim of John Wayne Gacy. So they were approximately, they were approximately 12 to 14 years old. They were a few years older than I am and was at that time. Oh, I, I don't know. I think he was born in like, I've done research. I think he was born in like 1947. So, I mean, John Garcia from ABC News, and this is on my news and events page, did an excellent interview several years ago about my story and what he did in his research he found out that um, technically from the time frame I gave him when I was molested by Gacy in January of 1972 the first victim the first boy that went missing his parents three weeks before I was molested c called the police and said their son was missing so technically, according to John Garcia's story, I would have been the second victim that he would have killed if he had gotten me out of the store. Thank you. Yes? Great question. <laughs> my brother, in his defense, my, I was the youngest child of five. I was my mother's favorite. I was sick when I was a child, very sick. And so my mother daunted on me. My relatives that are here can contest to that. And my brother was a middle child and it, it, it hurt him. It destroyed him to see that my mother gave more affection and love to me. And to be honest with you, my father has n had never laid a hand on me. My father never laid a hand on my other brothers and sisters, except my brother Marco, my brother who bullied me. And I don't know why, other than that, my brother didn't get the attention from my parents that he wanted or expected and that I drew it away from him. Oh, <laughs> um, it was about six months after my father passed away. My mother had a dinner um, where she wanted to have myself and my siblings and my nieces and nephews um, to kind of discuss my father's will and how things were gonna be split up. And I was coming from my best friend's house, Bob Redman, um, and my, my mother was calling me freak, freak, uh, kinda bizarre on the phone saying, where are you, why aren't you here yet? And I said, I'm on my way. And I was responsible for bringing the wine for the dinner that night and um, I won't go into the specific details that are in the book and it will waste too much time here. But my brother was upset. He was upset that I wasn't on time and I wasn't there and I wasn't doing what he expected me to do. And so when I came into my mom's house that evening, he attacked me verbally. Um, he called me an effing faggot and he told me that he hated me my entire life. And which at that point, um, I looked at my family and my siblings and I said, did you hear what he just said? And they put their heads down, not physically, they just turned their heads and they didn't want to face him. And I said, you're all crazy and I'm leaving. My brother then picked up a knife and he chased me down Cornelia Street until I got away and I called this man on my cell phone and said, 
you need to pick me up. We need to go to the police station and we need to file a report because my brother just attempted to kill me. Yes? The strength, where did I get the strength? You know, I think first of all, it was through therapy. Um, I have been in therapy for 16 years. The book all became a book because of going to therapy. My psychiatrist about seven years ago suggested that I write a diary and release myself therapeutically through the diary. Then this man, my best friend, Bob Rubman, um, asked to read my diary, and I let him. And a few weeks after he read the book, we got together and he said, oh my God, this diary is amazing. And this is going to be a New York Times bestseller, and you're going to help other people in their lives. And I looked at him and I said, you are insane. No one is going to want to read this book, and I'm not an author. Lo and behold, we turned it into a manuscript. Originally, I was represented by a major publishing house. They wanted to change the whole book. They didn't want it to be what it is. And I said, no, I'm not doing it with you because this book is going to be what I want it to be. And that's what led me to write the book the way it is. Yes? My, um, my brother, Marco, was three years older than me. My brother, Michael, was two years older than him, five years older than me. Um, it's a good question that you asked that because Michael protected me when I was younger from Marco. And Michael always was at my side. But he graduated from high school in 1976 and he immediately joined the Marines and went off. So I was alone with Marco in that bedroom um, for him to abuse me in any way he could. Yes? Well, interesting enough, and this is in the book, I'm telling you more than I should, um, my best friend, his parents still live on the next block where Gacy lived. They live on Pittsburgh and Bergwin. Um, I was at my best friend's house. It was a Thursday after school. And the police were all over the neighborhood and the media, almost in front of my friend's house. My best friend, his parents had a family room and we were playing pool down in the family room and his mother said something's going on outside and, him, and it, it happens that my best friend's father is a, now a retired Chicago policeman. He was in the 16th district and he was working that day and he called his wife and he said there's some crazy stuff going on you may want to turn on the news. At which point we, com we came up to the family room because we were down in the basement and we were like excited. We wanted to go outside and see what was going on. We had no idea. Then his mom turned on the news and we started to listen to the story. When I saw John Wayne Gacy's mugshot on the screen, I immediately ran to their bathroom and I started throwing up. I was in there for a few minutes when I came out. My best friend's mom knew I was, something was wrong with me and I said, I'm sick, I gotta go home, got to go home now. And I didn't drive then, I was 15 years old. And she's like, I can't take you home, I can't get out of the driveway, and you'll be okay. I just wanted to get out. The week after that, because of the guilt I dealt with of knowing that I hadn't come forward about being raped by Gacy, I attempted the first time suicide.
Any other question? Yes. Um, number one, primary is um, victims of abuse, domestic violence, um, child abuse. Um, secondary is parents to educate them on the signs because my goal is to start my second book very soon which is going to be totally an educational book that will be on seeing the signs of abuse or bullying that parents don't normally see. Um, the secondary audience is parents um, school superintendents, teachers, um, and then I think it's the general public of individuals, uh, my cousins and my aunts who now know that what has happened to me, it's families like that that know or find out that someone in their family has gone through abuse and now want to understand and find out what was really behind the whole scene. What's interesting enough about my family, I came from two loving parents, and don't get me wrong, they were the most wonderful parents in the world. Although, my parents never wanted to let our family outside to know what was going on. I will tell you, my parents didn't know, my mom didn't know until I was a doubt that I was raped. But they knew what Marco was doing to me. They knew that he was beating me. They were with me every time I was in the emergency room. Although they, my dad would come home after we got back from the hospital and beat the crap out of Marco. Then Marco would wait until I went to bed that night and he'd put a pillow over my head and beat the crap out of me. That was the cycle of the way our family related to that situation. Yes. Um, living his life alone, um, from what I understand through family members, um, his children don't talk to him. Um, he's broken all ties with the rest of our family. Um, He's got a good job. He has a girlfriend, from what I understand. Um, he is a lost soul. Um, now that I'm at peace of what I've gone through, I feel sorry for him. And I did write him a letter when, before the book came out, when I confronted and came forward and was viral through social media and I wrote him a letter and I said, you know what? Thank you so much. You did so much for me. Because if it wasn't for you, I would still be in this cocoon and never come forward with what has gone on in my life. And that day, you picked up the knife and you chased me out of mom's house. You showed me that you could kill me and that's not the way I wanted to live anymore. I didn't want to live in fear. And I always lived in fear with him. Hannah has read it. My daughter has read it. <laughs> um, her name's Cynthia in the book. I apologize. Um, Cynthia's read the book, and it, it was interesting because she came to spend Christmas with Greg and I. And it was be the book was published in January, so she had the pre-copy of the book. And I said, she goes, Dad, I want to read it. I want to read it. And you know, she was 17. And um, I said, Han I said, Cynthia, it's not, it's not, um, it's not going to be an easy read for you. And it's very difficult. And she started to read the first few chapters while she was with Greg and I for the Christmas holiday. And then she went home and a few days later she called me and she was sobbing. And she's like, Dad, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with 
what you've gone through. And I said, and she was crying, and then I was crying, and I said, Cynthia, I, I ache, I, 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 but I warned you that this was not going to be easy for you. And this whole process of, you know, my story coming out on TV, I mean, the interviews, it's not easy for her. What she says to me all the time is, Dad, I'm very proud of you. It's your story. It's your life. I will always love you. But when people ask me, is that your father? Yes, he is. If you want to know anything about him, you can ask him himself. Yes? Interesting enough, yes. Um, she asked if my parents um, ever accepted me as being gay. And interesting enough, yes. Um, they were the only ones that actually did in the family. Um, my father was very ill when I, he was going through the last few years of his life. And Marco was the primary caretaker of my dad, although my sister um, and I um, shared responsibilities at night to relieve Marco. And my father knew, because I had another partner at that time, and he would come to the house, and my dad knew what that was. And he loved me for who I was. He loved me as his son, he loved me as his caretaker, and he accepted it. My mother, um, we're, we'll answer that question in a minute about my mom, because that's what I want to read to all of you. Any other questions? Yes. Right. Um, I mean, my strength comes from being a survivor and admitting and accepting what had happened to me because for so long I didn't. I'll be really honest with you, that man over there, my partner in life, Greg, has been my strength and my foundation on every level. I cannot tell you, there is several nights during any month at a time that I have a nightmare of Marco attacking me, and I'm screaming. And Greg will hold me until I wake up. And that's what has been my strength, to be honest with you. One more question, then I'll, I'd like to read um, a little uh, sort of from my book that I think might be of interest. Um, then I want all of you to enjoy um, our reception. We have some hors d'oeuvres and drinks, and I'm going to do some book signings and all of that. Let me take your question, please. Yes. Right. No, they, they were wonderful parents in the sense they did everything. My father was a great supporter financially to his children and mentally. Um, I think that um, it goes back to the denial. There was a lot of expectations with our relatives that we had to be this picture-perfect family, 
And if anything was out of place, everybody thought we were odd or weird, so they didn't want to, to do that. Um, but I think at the same time, um, you know, they, they did the best they could. It was in the 1970s, the 1980s. It was a, it was a time where, unfortunately, we're at this time now where it's still not as vocal as it should be. But at, in that era was where it was safer to just put it to the side and not let bring any weirdness out and expose ourselves as being dysfunctional. And um, so let me just give you a real quick intro. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of one of the chapters of my book. This is a, a, a segment of when I came out to my mother. And um, I'll read it, and you'll get the gist of it. <laughs> um, and uh, So... I'll just set this up for you real quickly. This is when I was dating Bradley, who was my partner, who was abusive to me. Um, I introduced him to my sister, uh, Maria, and Bradley and I were going to meet with her. And then, as I read, you'll get the gist of it when I came out to my mom. Um, Bradley said, you told me about your pathetic episodes with Marty and Alberto, and I'm not going to be any part of that. Either you tell your family or I'll do it myself. I'm not sure why, but I decided that the first person in my family I would come out to as a gay man would be my sister Maria. Maria and I had grown apart over the years because she decided to distance herself from our family when dad became ill. She did not want to help in assisting in my father's illness. Maria had become consumed with her own life and wanted no part in our family anymore. We had not actually talked in about a year, but because her husband's brother was gay, I figured they would accept me and understand my decision to come out to them. I called Maria and asked if she would, she and Steve could meet me for dinner. Maria accepted my invite, having no idea of the bomb I was about to drop on her. We met at the restaurant, and when Bradley and I walked in together, they seemed, some, they seemed somewhat confused. I introduced Bradley to them, and we sat down. I told them the two of us had met when I was on a business trip in California. I explained that Bradley had just moved to Chicago and that I was introducing him to new people so he could become comfortable with the city. After a few glasses of wine, I started to feel more comfortable when Bradley, <clears throat> with Bradley being with me. During the course of dinner, Bradley excused himself and said he needed to use the restroom while he was gone from the table, I looked at Maria and Steve, and I said, I have something important to tell you. They both looked at me very intensely. Maria said, what's wrong? I said, I'm telling the both of you this because you can understand and respect my decision. Maria said, we're family. Tell us what you need to tell us, Patrick. I said, I haven't told anyone in our family this, and I need to ask you both not to say a word until I've told this to the rest of the family. I could tell by the look on their faces they knew what I was going to say. Bradley returned to the table, and I took his hand and looked at Maria and Steve and said, this is my boyfriend. 
Bradley looked at me and smiled. Maria and Steve had huge smiles on their faces and both could, got up and hugged me. Maria said I knew for years, but was waiting for you to tell us, Patrick. I, it was obvious, but you just held it inside. Steve, who was a, is a wonderful human being, said, Patrick, I'm so proud of you and just want you to be happy. I looked at Maria and I said, please, don't say a word. I want mom and dad to find out from me. Bradley was beaming and excited and said, I'm so excited to be a part of this family. My sister Maria said, Bradley, be careful what you ask for with our family because you know they're all crazy. I said, Maria, listen, I know we have, our, have had our differences over the years, but I love our family and I do not want you to fill Bradley's head with things that you're bitter about. Maria hugged Bradley and said, I'm happy, you, I'm happy for you and Patrick, and you're always welcome into our home. Then Maria said, don't expect to be, that to be the case with the rest of our family, though. I said, Maria, it will be all right. I'm going to tell everyone when I'm ready. We ended the night on a good note and promised we would get together soon. I had finally done it. I had come out of the closet to my family. This was a huge step for me, and I was nervous. How would I approach the rest of my family about this, though? Would they be as accepting as Maria and Steve? Would I become the scandal of our family? The last thing in the world I wanted to do was to hurt or disappoint my family. I love them, and they are my life. Why did I decide now to come out to them? I had so many questions running through my head. I couldn't think straight. A few days later, I got a phone call from my mom, and she said, I need to speak with you. Can you come over tonight? I said, is something wrong, Mom? She said, no, I need, I need to talk with you. This was not like my mother, because when she has something on her, <laughs> on her mind, she just lets it out. She knew something. Maria had told her, what was I going to do? I went over to Mom's house and she was sitting alone in the kitchen. What's up, Mom? Where's Dad? Mom said, your brother took Dad with him so, we could be, so he could be out of the house. I said, what did you want to talk about? She said, I was talking to your Aunt Jessica and she told me something. I said, okay. What did Aunt Jessica tell you? Mom said, my sister told me she found out that you're, you are gay. My heart dropped to the floor. I could see the disappointment in my mom's eyes. I said, what are you talking about, Mom? I was frozen. I didn't know what else to say. Mom said, Patrick, is it true? I said, Mom, I've wanted to tell you for a long time. Mom said, Patrick, is it true? Are you really gay? With tears running, <laughs> running down my face, I said, yes, Mom, I am gay. Mom walked over to the sink and she began to wash dishes. I said, Mom, stop washing dishes and look at me. Mom said, I don't believe you're gay. You were married to two women and you have children. I said, Mom, I've been carrying this with me for a long time. Mom said, how is it that my sister tells me my son is gay? Who else have you told this to, Patrick? I said, Mom, I only told 
one person. I've told this to Maria. You tell your sister who had distanced herself from this family. You go and tell that daughter of mine that you think you're gay before you're telling anyone else why she pleaded. First of all, first of all mom, I am gay. And I told Maria because I thought she and Steve would understand. Because Steve's brother Arthur is gay, I replied. Mom had her hands in the sink full of suds washing dishes. She looked at me and declared, my baby boy is not gay. This is a phase in your life, Patrick. You were married to two bad women who did not treat you right. You will find a nice girl and you will get married again and life will be happy for you. Mom said all of this as if she was reading from a how-to manual. I said, Mom, I tried that and it didn't work. I want to be with a man now. I have always kept these feelings deep inside so that no one in the family would be hurt. Now I'm I'm done hiding now. I'm with Bradley. My mom said, I love you more than anything in the world, Patrick. And you will always be welcome in my home, but I will not believe that you are gay. I said, Mom, I can only tell you the way I feel and that I want you to be a part of my life. Suddenly I heard my mother my brother Marco coming into the back door and helping my dad up the stairs. When dad got into the, um, the stairwell, I pulled him into the kitchen and Marco handed me dad's walker. I sat dad down in a chair. I was about to tell him my secret, but before I could speak a word, my mom said, Patrick, you need to be on your way. I have to feed your father lunch Dad said, Patrick, why are you here today? Mom interrupted and said, he, he was checking up on you, Butch. Now, Patrick, you need to go on your way. She had tears in her eyes, and I had felt like I just shattered her world. I said, Mom, are you going to be okay? Mom ki kissed me on the cheek, and she said, Honey, I love you with all my heart, and I'm fine. Now go. Be on your way. I left the house. I had just come out to my mom. I felt lost. Thank you.